Hey everybody, this is Kevin again. Okay, so I'm going to do another study. And uh, this one kind of has to do with, <clears throat> well, you know, basically the time frame of when the time of Jacob's trouble or 70th week of Daniel would begin. We're just going to look at this. And like I said before, don't just believe what I'm saying. Um, you know, seek it out. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures. And, uh, you know, I could be wrong, but I'm just looking at this. And I just wanted to show you some things, see what you think about it. But here we go. Okay. This generation shall not pass. Okay. That's the name of the study. And, of course, I get that from this particular scripture right here. From Matthew 24, 34, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. You know, Matthew 24, Jesus spoke of a lot of things that were happening, that were going to happen. Not happening, but were going to happen in the future. Okay? And he was speaking to, it's, he says, what generation was Jesus referring to and how long is a generation? And he was speaking to the Jews, okay? I'm going to show you why. Okay, so when you therefore shall see the, the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Though Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. That's Matthew 24, from verse 15 to 22. As you can see right there, all of what he's talking about there, he's speaking of a future time frame, uh, and he's he's talking to the Jews. He's not talking to the church. I know a lot of people will say they think he's talking to the church. He's not. Okay? This passage speaks of what will happen to those in Judea, modern-day Israel, during the time of Jacob's trouble. Obviously, the generation Jesus was referring to was a, ge a future generation, since not all of the things he spoke of were fulfilled at that present generation he was uh, giving the Olivet Discourse to. He was giving prophecy of what would happen in the distant future. There is much speculation as to how long a generation is in Scripture. Some think it's 40 years based on how long the children of Israel wandered in the desert before they could enter the Promised Land. Some will say it's about 51 years based on an average. Some will say it's 100 years as well. The best answer from the scriptures that I can find is in Psalm 90. And this is from Psalm 90, verse 10. The days of our years are threescore years and ten, if, and if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. And so, as you can see there, when it's saying threescore and ten, uh, anytime you see a word with score in it in the King James Bible, just realize that score means times 20. So 3 times 20 is what, 60? And 10, that's 70 years. And if by reason of strength they'd be 4 score years, 4 times 20, it's 80. Okay, so if a generation is between 70 and 80 years, when did the generation Jesus spoke of begin? Most prophecy scholars believe that the generation started when Israel became a nation again in 1948. Let's do some math. Okay, May 14th, 1948, Israel officially becomes a nation. Okay, so 1948 plus 70 years equals 2018. 1948 plus 80 years equals 2028. The generation will not pass until all these things are fulfilled. This includes the glorious appearing of Jesus Christ coming back to destroy the armies of the beast and false prophet and setting up his millennial kingdom. 
So the beginning of the 70th week of Daniel would begin between 2011 and 2021. We are at the end of 2017 right now. So we would only have until 2021 at the latest for the 70th week of Daniel to begin and end in 2028. That would be making a generation exactly 80 years. Okay, so we see the math again. 1948 plus 70 equals 2018. Minus 7 equals 2011. 1948 plus 80 equals 2028. Minus 7 equals 2021. The conclusion, the 70th week of Daniel should start between now and 2021 and end by 2028 at the latest. you got to realize he said this generation shall not pass until all these things be fulfilled. In other words, would you necessarily have to go all the way to the very end of a generation if it, if it was to be 80 years? Would you have to go all the way to the end of that? for all of these things to be fulfilled. In other words, for the 70th week of Daniel to happen at, and Jesus to return at the end of that and establish his millennial kingdom. Would that be at the very end of a generation? In other words, at the very end of 80 years? Or would it more likely be between 70 to 80 years? Somewhere there in that time frame. Well, I'll just say this. at the at, As of right now, we're in December of 2017. And if this time frame began, that, that the 70th week of Daniel would begin, started at the year 2011, well, we've already gone six more years past that. <laughs> so we're, we're in the middle of that, that, that time frame, but the latest that we could go, and we're going, going into 2018 soon, in, unless the Lord takes us home before 2018 begins, uh, but the latest, it seems, that we could go is the year 2021, before the 70th week of Daniel begins, okay? So, that's my my study right now. I just thought of this the other day. I was like, you know, I want to make a study of this. I'll put it on there. Let people take a look at this. I know probably a lot of you have already thought about this before. But this just kind of puts it right in front of you and, then, and puts the numbers out there and... You know, nobody's trying to set any kind of dates or anything like that. We're just trying to figure out if the generation Jesus was speaking about starts at 1948 when the nation of Israel began and goes to the end of it, which by Psalm 90 verse 10 would be between 70 and 80 years. And that sounds reasonable that that would be a generation of time. And so I think Psalm 90 is probably what really a generation length of time is, 70 to 80 years. If you think about it, that's probably the average time that a person lives is the in these days, between 70 and 80 years. There are some centurions out there that live uh, be 100 years old or more, but it's very few. Very few people make it to 100. Okay, so I hope you uh, got something out of this study. I hope you... Uh, you know, we're kind of encouraged by it and somewhat. I know that we're all kind of discouraged at this point that we are still here. The church is still here waiting for Jesus to take the church home and then for the 70th week of Daniel to begin. It does give us a little bit more time, though, to get out and witness to the lost, try to bring more people into the lifeboat and off of the Titanic that this world is. Um, so, you know... I hope that uh, this encourages you. We continue to watch for the Lord Jesus Christ. We continue to hope that at some point here soon, he will take the church home. But I do want to say this to any of you that are watching this. And if you don't know right now that if you died today, you'd go to heaven. I can tell you right now that Jesus Christ died on the cross 2,000 years ago for your sins. He paid for them all on the cross so that if you would believe on him, you would have eternal life. If you would put your trust in him, he will give you eternal life. He made it easy because he did all the work for you. He did what you couldn't do. You could not pay for your sins. The only way you can pay for your sins is in the lake of fire for eternity. And I know you don't want to go there. But if you want eternal life, you want to be with Jesus and, and eternal bliss with the Lord, 
then you need to put your faith in Jesus Christ for your salvation, to believe that he died on the cross to pay for your sins, and he rose from the dead three days later. Okay, he's alive in, he's alive, he's in heaven, sitting at the right hand of the Father. And at some point soon here, he's going to come down, not all the way down, he's going to come into the sky, and he's going to call all of us who are first of the dead in Christ first, then those of us who are alive remain will be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. And so will we, be, we ever be with the Lord. So that's what's called the rapture of the church. It's the catching away of the believers, the catching away of the church. That's going to be the dead in Christ first and those which are alive and remain. It's going to happen so fast. It's going to be in a twinkling of an eye. It's going to happen so quickly. So I hope that if there's those of you out here uh, watching this video that you don't know for sure that uh, if you died, you'd, you would have eternal life. I pray that you will find that and seek that out. Know for sure. Put your trust in Jesus Christ. See yourself as a sinner in need of a Savior. Humble yourself before the Lord and put your faith in Jesus Christ today. God bless you all. Until next time.